good afternoon. No, still good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, well, it's so nice to see so many people, and I believe uh, we have some very distinguished people from the education industry. Uh, I do, I am associated with a number of different colleges, so I have uh, the unique opportunity of interacting with the people you mentor, with a lot of students. Uh, and uh, what is amazing to see that as time has passed, I've been speaking for so many years, that as time has passed, how students have also evolved in their thought process and how interactive they have become. So I think a huge credit goes for that. For that goes to a lot of people over here, and I'm sure that will keep evolving uh, as, as time passes. So uh, since I have 20 minutes and the timer has started, uh, I'm not going to talk about Cybage, the organization. I don't know how many of you all know about Cybage. I won't be surprised if you don't because it's a very low key, low profile organization in terms of its branding, but definitely not in terms of the work that we do. So we are one of the top 20 IT services company in India. Uh, we're close to 6,000 people, privately held, not gone public, no external investment, never done an acquisition. The entire growth till date has been purely organic. So it's, it's a fundamentally very robust organization uh, that we run uh, in, in the city of Pune, one of Pune's, one of the very few Pune's own uh, organizations from an IT perspective. And I'll tell you something else about Cybage, but that's towards the end of the presentation. Today I'm going to talk about, as you can see the subject over here, Industry 4.0 for us, for us as an organization, uh, data has been the whole and soul from, a, from an organization, from an organization DNA perspective, not today, right from 2005, 2006, when probably no one was talking about machine learning or artificial intelligence, that's when we made our first platform to be consumed internally. So we don't, we don't sell products, we are a services company, which means everything we do is for our clients. So we work with some very large names, right from a Microsoft to a Google to a Symantec, Expedia, uh, there are a bunch of uh, different large clients we work for, for whom we do pure play product development, not IT services. So it's actually developing what you see, what you use for them. Um, so we didn't, we didn't. But we said if we want to do our work well, then we cannot just rely on human intelligence itself. How can we make that human intelligence come together so that we can maximize its potential? And the only way we could do it was data. And that is what we call data, the new oil, prescriptive analytics, the new machines. So this is what I'm going to talk about. My subject is prescriptive analytics. Okay. So these are some facts, uh, as you can see over here. Uh, we have uh, a very senior executive from Amazon as well, AWS rather. So we all use Amazon in different ways. As you can read over here, Amazon's product recommendation is fueled by customer behavior data mainly basket analysis, this, like these recommendation boosted sales by 29%. That's a huge number. Similarly, YouTube, when we go, the average time a person intends to spend and the actual average time he spends while going on YouTube is very different because of the recommendations you get over there, because of what your liking is. So 70% is recommended by the YouTube algorithm. So that is what you call machine learning, that's what you call in terms of understanding and then being prescriptive or predictive in nature. And uh, more and more revenues we know are being leveraging machine, uh, I mean machine intelligence. Uh, if you are not doing it, your competition is doing it. And everything around us, there's a lot of data being collected. The problem is how is that data being analyzed and how that data gets converted into insights actually makes the difference. All of us, if being shown the same data, will interpret it very differently. Or if not very differently, differently for sure. And that interpretation will lead to a result which all of us will take an action. Some sort of action or a decision we will take based on that data. Now one of us over here, his decision will be more accurate than everyone else. How do you ensure that you build consistency in that same decision making? So you create actionable insights for individuals looking at the data so that everyone does not interpret that data differently. Okay, one of the key things, and this happens in every industry, whether we are working in education industry, to, this is appraisal time in the IT industry as well. Um, how do we look at people? It's so much biased in terms of what has happened recently because the human mind can't remember so many things. 
there is going to be bias in our decision making. So most of the decisions we believe we are making with a clear mind are actually controlled by mental shortcuts known as cognitive biases, causing us to jump to less than optimal out outcomes because our brains have evolved to instinctively reduce uncertainty and keep us on the safe path. Because the mind is always thinking that there are four directions but this is probably my experience says the most safe path. Experience is good, gut feel is good, everything is good but there is still one person's experience. How do you collate everything together so you can maximize that power of experience that you have. So the fundamental impact of data is to remove human biases and you can do that only if you analyze data in a much more stronger manner. So what we have, we never, like I said, as an organization, we never intended to sell products. Uh, but what we made for ourselves in 2005, 2006 and continued developing it, eventually we thought we can bring it to market and that is what we call decision minds. Uh, that's the platform we have, that's the only thing that we sell. Our major business is IT services. Okay. So what you see over here is per perhaps a chart that you might have seen multiple times before. Whenever any incident happens, what is it that we do for the first time? The first is what you have is called as descriptive hindsight. What happened? You go and describe it or you know what this happened, that happened and many other things. You describe the incident that just happened. Then is the diagnostic insights. You go and try and find out the reason why it happened. That's the natural process. That's you're diagnosing the issue. You're trying to find the root cause of a particular incident that happened. And then comes your predictive insight. Is there something that in the future I can do or what I can do from that perspective or what learning I have? But then after that comes the prescriptive pointers that you knew what happened. You know the circumstances in which it happened. You know the people that were involved, their characteristics that happened. Now, can I create a methodology by which I can prescribe it? Which means before it happens, I tell that this is about to happen. By the way, these are the steps that can prevent it from happening because this has been proven in the past. Please go ahead and take this action. So everything what I'm going to speak about is when you analyze data to convert it into actionable insights, which is what we call decision minds. And why is it called decision minds? Because we say any decision we take can have two impacts. If it's a very good decision, it's like a gold mine. If it's not one, then it's like a land mine. So that is why it's called decision minds. So that was the concept behind naming it decision mind. And the finally is cognitive intelligence, which is very, very less. No matter what we say, cognitive intelligence in India is, or in the world is very, very less. There are very, very few platforms who can mildly talk about cognitive intelligence. Everything stops at prescriptive as of today. And that's what people are working on generally. So I thought the best way, so what is decision minds? It basically enables decision makers to make fast decisions, leaders to identify any possible threats and opportunities so that you can predict and prescribe over it. It's aligned, you align it with organization goals. So it's persona based. So based on the role you are playing, if I am a marketing or a sales head, if someone is a delivery head, someone is an engineering head, you are a CTO, you are a CIO, you are a CO. A persona is very different. Every persona has its own KRAs, has its own goals to meet. So you make sure that the, his KRAs are aligned with the platform and he's able to achieve those. So that is how it kind of maps to a person's role. So best person for the best role. And leveraging data across organization boundaries. So one of the ways um, to look at it is, I'll share some customer stories and that will make it very interesting. What you see over here are four, wealth management, retail, transportation, sports. Let's talk about, talk about sports. IPL is going on. We actually helped one of the IPL teams when last year the auctions were happening. We were on their auction table. We cannot tell the name of the IPL team. For them to decide which player to buy at what cost such that their teams are most suitably balanced and yet they are not paying for that person extra. Because see when an auction is happening, people are buying. There's a lot of emotion that is going on. So many film stars on the, so I was there at that place. I was not on the auction table because we felt the architect who's designed it is better to sit over there than a salesperson. But I was behind in the, uh, in the room outside. So it's, there's a lot of emotions. Everyone wants to bid for it. There are so many high profile people. They don't realize what they are doing. And many times what happens is uh, you are trying to create a dream. You are trying to create a person for like an all-rounder or a player or something like that. And the other team is also trying. 
Now you don't know who's going to come next, but you know that there are these people who are still in the pool. So you decide how the other eight teams composition is already made, how much money they have, how much money you have, what players you have to buy and what is the worth of every single player we analyzed over the last 10 years based on every single ball they have played, every single ball they have balled, bowled, fielded, left, no ball wide, every single minute analysis done, it predicts the value of a player and if you are playing, paying more than that, then you can go a little bit more but going way more than that you are actually losing money because a better player is about to come and no one else will buy him because they have already closed that slot. So that is what we did in IPL using this platform. Let's look at wealth management. Wealth management I'll actually explain in detail so I won't go over here. Retail, retail. So how do you decide when you go to Big Bazaar, when you go to Dmart, there are a lot of products which they sell from other brands, a Nestle or a Colgate or anyone else. But they also have their private labels, right? A Dmart label or a Big Bazaar label or a Walmart label. How do you decide which products should be private, white labeled and which products should be from the other competitors? Some sort of analysis which tells you which are the fast running ones, which people will not care for a brand and still pick it up from a cost perspective. So that kind of analysis. Not just that, there's a number of other things. How do you stock? How do you destock? When to order from your vendor? How to order from your vendor? So how do you decide those intelligent decision making? At the end of the day, you're going to spend some money. How do you maximize the impact of that money? Let's talk about one example in leader uh, in wealth management. So we we work with one of India's largest private no the in India's largest private wealth management company. So their clients are all HNIs. I mean they are all very very rich, so more than hundred crores in terms of net worth. Net worth. How do they decide if they lose one customer? It's a big loss to them, but they have only so few relationship managers. So how do we decide how to do customer retention? For doing that, first you have to predict which is the customer which is most likely to be lost. And then the actions that you need to take based on all the other customers that you are successfully retaining, what could be actions you say? So you look at number of things, you look at the portfolio performance, you look at the average size of the entire portfolio, you look at the connect, the relationship manager connect, how well I am connected with that person. If I call him up, does he pick, me, pick my phone at any point of time? Do I meet him often? The type of things I do with him. The milestone, what is this person's milestone that he wants to achieve. So number of different parameters are analyzed and then we predict that if you have 20 customers or 100 customers, who are you most likely to lose and then what, act, what actions you can take in a prescriptive manner to prevent them from happening. The actions could be multiple, Sorry. right, so that is one. There is another thing, a lot of people in sales, we, we run after a number of different prospects. How do we know with which prospect we need to spend more energy? The human mind will always go in a comfortable zone. This guy gives me more meetings, he likes me more, I'll do more meetings with him. But is that the case? Every salesperson is different. Some sales people like to have more dinners, conference calls than others. The others are more meticulous. They will send a birthday email, they will send an anniversary greeting, they'll send the bouquet at the right time. Now everyone is doing, we have left everyone to their role. Can we analyze that and tell him that this person that you are interacting with is more open to doing meetings rather than emails, so you interact with him in that manner. Or can we say that this prospect is most likely to give you business, so forget doing activities with number 10, try and do it with number 1. So you are again using the same energies that you have but you are channelizing those energies in a way where it maximum impact can happen. So we do it, let me give you an example of how we do it. Uh, we are a 6,000 people company, this year we will have a 18% organic growth rate which is probably the highest in the Indian IT services industry and this is purely organic, no acquisition, nothing and our global sales team is 12 people, that is it, we have 12 sales people, one tenth of our nearest competitor because we know where to spend our energies and the moment you know that 90% of our business comes from references because you manage that connect so well you know whom to connect with, how to connect with, where to connect with. So you are using data intelligence to convert it into actionable insights. What are actionable insights? Something like that. Meet over coffee, send an invitation for an event, personalize email conversation. We give points to each of these activities. Each activity has a different weightage. And each of these points, every individual that we are targeting as a person has a particular point also. So we have to achieve that number. So from that sense, and it, it's, just, it's a very, very dynamic system. So it's always live. It's always changing because someone important today could be less important tomorrow. A salesperson today could change. 
things like that. So, it is a very active, it refreshes itself every 24 hours and it is giving you intelligence in terms of which prospect is more important for you to spend your energy. Um, there is something else, let us talk about a hospitality industry. We work with one of the largest hotel chains in the world, Accor Group, they are our clients. So, let us say when you call up for your reservation and you have done a booking in maybe a deluxe jacuzzi or wherever your current room is done. Now, you are calling up the person, the call center person randomly to all of us will say, sir, do you want to upgrade or do you want an airport transfer or would you want a spa package included in this, do you want a, a lunch to be included in this, they are doing this to everyone without knowing where it will work, how it will work. What if I build intelligence into it? What if I study the customer in a manner that I know this person always does an airport transfer or he prefers staying in a some sort of a room or across the globe the type of rooms he stays in, what kind of interactions he has with the people, all that data is available with the hotel. Now, if I can analyze that information, when the call comes in, two things can happen. Based on the type of the person, the call gets actually this, uh, to, the, to the call center person who is most apt to act on this thing. So, one, it is not randomly gone to a call center person. Two, that call center person right in front of him gets an action item. This guy is most likely to upgrade or take a spa package or take a lunch dinner, whatever it is. And he tries and sells it. You are increasing the percentage increase of an upsell or a cross sell over here. This is something we develop for them. There is another thing we can do, which we call as a social media champion. We all go to reviews. TripAdvisor and everything, whenever we are going to a hotel, we go to go and have a look at the reviews, kya likha hai, what is it written, is the kids area nice or they have a, they have a fitness center or not, I, I do that all the time and I travel extensively, but uh, you, you always tend to test. So, how do you decide who should give a review? Can the hotel build an intelligence that the people who are most likely to give a good review actually give the reviews and that is why you improve your rating. So, the people who are most likely to give are your social media champions. The chances are they will go and put a nice review on Twitter. The chances are they will go to TripAdvisor and put it better. And those are the people who can be given some privileges, a faster check-in, a priority room, better SLAs. So, if you analyze the customers, analyze while they are staying with you, how their behavior patterns are, what makes them happy and you are, and all this is being recorded. We have not done anything new. All this data is with the hotel. We are using that data and, and all the people, they have analysts and everyone is looking at that data. But one person is saying, Aisa karna the other is saying, Aisa karna What we do is we use that data and we say prioritized manner, what is the best thing to do. So, you convert it into more actionable insights in the way that it is impactful for that individual. That is one of the things we do. So, what, what is it that we do? You can, you take your strategic, one of the important things is we are all, we are all very interested in strategy. Imagine if everyone is doing strategy, then who is executing that strategy? Someone has to execute also. In Indian organizations or in many organizations, the senior leadership is busy giving strategies. The middle tier is trying to execute them by delegating it to the junior group and the junior group is completely lost as to what to do. The most important thing is, Strategy has no meaning unless converted into tactical actions and this is what we try to do. So, everyone in our organization right from our CEO has his dashboard. When we come in the morning, we see our dashboard. The dashboard already has all the prioritized list of actions. To the degree, we know accurately in our 1 to, to 6000 people who is most likely to leave next, next, the highest probable attrition to the lowest probable attrition. What I can do to prevent that from happening is also known. Should I do that or not is also known because you do not want to stop everyone, you want people to leave. Any organization who comes and says I have a very low attrition, there are only two things, either you do not have good enough people who are leaving or you are paying too much. These are the only two reasons people will stay because in a very competitive market where the attrition rates are 20 percent, if someone says I have 7 percent, how do you look at it? There is something that is different. So, if you go to, actually if you go to Glassdoor. And if you check out Cybage on Glassdoor and we do not sponsor, you can see from that perspective, numerous times they have approached us for sponsoring or doing other things. We do not do, it is a randomized order of doing things. We are ranked five in five out of the nine parameters, we are ranked number one across all IT services companies in India. One is the best work life balance. We have hardly, we are a services company and we have less than one percent of our workforce who works on a Saturday or Sunday. We have the best transparent culture in the 
we are ranked number one, the most fair in terms of opportunities and most recommended senior management. We are nowhere close to number one in salary. We are in fact somewhere in the middle. Because one of the things salary can do is buy loyalty. Paying more can buy loyalty. But if you can maintain your salary as industry average and yet achieve all the parameters, it can only happen through science. It cannot happen through a person being enigmatic or anything like that. It can only happen through science where you use the power of data to act on items which are most important from an employee or a customer perspective. So the moment you are doing that, you are able to create an environment which is fair and transparent. So what Decision Minds does is what it does for an organization like us, what it does for organizations like maybe a, um, an IPL team or it does for a large hotel chain. We work with a car rental company telling them which cars they should be fleeting, defleeting next, which is the next center that they should be opening worldwide in a more accurate manner. They were doing it on an Excel sheet. So these are very important things from an actionable perspective. So this is what Decision Minds does. It's a speed of decision making. It's a culture of data driven and consistent decision making. So what I will leave you with the thought is that data in any form is of no use. How you use that and convert it into actionable insights makes all the difference for any organization. Thank you.